Hey guys, BuildZoid here, and this is going to be a bit of a weird video, um, but it, it's just something I c kind of found interesting, because I've been working on my PCB breakdown for the RTX 3080 FTW3 for Gamers Nexus, and, well, Steve from Gamers Nexus sent me pictures of the pre-release RTX 3080 FTW3, and I couldn't help but notice that the, the capacitor configuration on his pre-release card, mind you, he didn't have any crashing issues with his pre-release card, but also his card is like the best overclocking card he has, as far as I know. So he, he might have gotten like super lucky with the silicon on his card. Um, and it's just like crazy good. Um, and so it also wouldn't be affected. Like if, if you have some kind of like power management glitch in the drivers, that basically, because the thing is, all hardware is supposed to ship with a safety margin in terms of the stock operating voltage relative to the stock frequency. Like, you're not going to be shipping GPUs with 5 millivolts of safety margin. Because 5 millivolts is like, if somebody uses, like, it, it, if the room temperature is slightly off, or if, uh, like, like th there are so many variables that you wouldn't want to be shipping products with a 5 millivolt safety margin, because they might plug it into a PSU that's especially bad, and then, then it doesn't work or something. So... Uh, normally, you have a pretty generous safety margin of anywhere between, like, 50 to maybe 150 millivolts. Maybe even 200 millivolts. Really depends. Like, that's why sometimes you can undervolt by, like, crazy amounts is because, like, yeah, there's a safety margin built in. And if you have really high-quality silicon, that safety margin actually gets blown out because it gets even bigger than it normally should be. Um, but generally, there's a safety margin so that you don't have cards that, you know, are unstable if the operating conditions are just ever so slightly less than optimal. Because um, that's bad. <laughs> you don't want unstable GPUs out in the wild. Now, if you have a power management issue where the dry, like the boost algorithm is a bit too aggressive because of a, like some something to do with the configuration of the driver and the workload that is running. And, and like, you know, if you have a card, which due to its capacitor configuration is already using up some of the safety margin and then you combine that with a power management problem you end up with like straight up crashing right and then you could also have a card that has incredibly good silicon and then you know the safety margin gets like and so the card with the incredibly good silicon like say what steve probably has um the safety margin on that is going to be huge and so when the capacitors chew up some of it it doesn't really matter um so that's kind of the thing. And that's why the, the crashing wasn't like, uh, like not all cards were, like only some cards were affected. And basically, as far as I know, you had some samples from every manufacturer that had like an overclocked SKU. Um, there were some samples that would be crashing. Because I've heard of tough cards crashing. I've heard of the MSI cards crashing. I've heard of the, um, well, I've not heard of any pallet cards, but those I don't think come overclocked. So basically, yeah, it's just like, and, and then of course you also have some exceptions like Steve's pre-release FTW3, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and so, you know, it's not really, so there, there's kind of a combination of issues there. But anyway, um, what I find really interesting about the statement from EVGA is that if we look at the pre-release board, And then you look at the re final retail version, which actually let's get the bigger picture. Um, and then you look at like a reference card and back to the pre-release board and it's like, okay, wait a minute, 220, bunch of multi-layer ceramics, another 220, 220, 220, 220. And you know, I think this might just be a straight downgrade. This might be one of the first RTX 3080s I've seen where this is like a straight downgrade. Because um, most of the other cards actually go for higher capacitance uh, SP caps. And uh, there's a lot of cards which will still keep the multi-layer ceramic capacitor group and some SP caps. Like this, this as far as I know, is the reference spec, right? So Gigabyte here uh, says SP caps, you should have, like Gigabyte says the reference spec from NVIDIA was... Uh, 5 22 microfarad SP caps and then 10 22 microfarad multilayer ceramics. And the thing is, if you're replacing uh, 10 multilayer ceramics with a 220 microfarad SP cap, it's never gonna work out in the favor. Like, if the capacitance is the same, it's just a straight downgrade. 
And the reason why I say it's just a straight downgrade is because you're never going to have less ESR than 10 multi-layer ceramics unless those multi-layer ceramics are garbage. Um, which, again, like, you probably, like, actually, I'm not even sure that you could get a 22 microfarad multi-layer ceramic in an 0805 package with, like, more than 10 milliohms of ESR. And if they have 10 milliohms of ESR, you're still not going to get an SP cap that that's better than the the 22 microfarad multi-layer ceramics in parallel because the thing is if you put a bunch of uh multi-layer ceramics in parallel and they let's say they had 10 milliohms of e uh, 10 milliohms of esr which is really high for multi-layer ceramics um you would still end up with like one milliohm of esr total because they're in parallel um so you get one tenth the esr as if you had one of them um, whereas with the SP cap, like the best SP caps you can buy are three milliohms ESR. So you like even if you use the very best SP caps you could. Um, well, actually, if you also replace all of the other ones, it might kind of compete. Like if you're replacing all of them with better SP caps, it might you might be able to. It might work out, but I somehow doubt that these are the like th these are the most expensive 220 microfarad sp caps that panasonics makes um so yeah also mlccs normally don't have 10 milliohms of esr that's really high um but anyway um yeah so so this right here with all probability was just a straight downgrade from the reference configuration and then they went back for the retail card to basically the reference configuration, plus uh, an extra multi-layer ceramic capacitor group. It's also interesting how they're like, oh yeah, our XC3 series didn't have any issues, and that uses the reference capacitor configuration. And I'm just like, so so now that I'm looking at the, the, the you know, the pre-release FTW3, I'm looking at this statement like, so you're probably the only company that actually produ made it problem. Right, because like everybody else, seemingly used like the reference specification or tried to go above it in some way, either more total capacitance and lower ESR capacitors, and uh, or if you're Asus, you just replace everything with multi-layer ceramics, or if you're MSI or MSI went with um, they used uh, larger, like they kept the multi-layer ceramics and then used larger, S like better SP caps. Or if you're uh, NVIDIA for the Founders Edition, they didn't actually use SP caps. They have some other 470 microfarad uh, polymers, but they're still bigger than the reference specification on the Founders Edition card as well. And so it's like basically everybody that I'm like, basically every PCBR I'm aware of that isn't using the, like isn't using this configuration, which is the reference spec, uses something that looks like it might even be an up like that's potentially an upgrade maybe definitely is an upgrade um and then there's evga where their pre-release card just like un unless these are super low esr this is a straight downgrade like just there, there's not really any debate about it so it's like so th that makes the context for this statement kind of like you're probably one of the few manufacturers who really actually had a, a proper problem with their capacitor configuration because like this this right here looks like this just looks terrible and then it's like yeah and th then we went to a slight upgrade from the reference spec and it's just like i mean yeah you know you go below the reference specification from nvidia and it stops working i mean that's what the reference spec is for <laughs> Why is this an issue? Because <laughs> reference spec is this. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what EVGA thought they could get away with, and this is what they ended up with once they realized, wait a minute, maybe maybe there was something in that reference specification from N NVIDIA. Um, and they apparently spent uh, a week of R&D effort on finding out that y you don't go below the reference specification. It's kind of like, and at the same time, there was some cards that even with this capacitor configuration work just fine, like Steve's. Um, so, 
Yeah, like that's the annoying thing with this is like, cause, because again, there's a safety margin. The reference spec, like this capacitor configuration here from NVIDIA will still have a safety margin of some amount of millivolts depending on the quality of, like a, a not insignificant safety margin depending on, you know, the quality of your silicon. And so, yeah, if you have some really great silicon and then you downgrade the capacitor configuration, it's still going to work. Um, and if you have some borderline silicon in terms of, you know, it's already using up most of the safety margin by existing, and then you downgrade the reference, uh, th then you go down from the reference specification, yeah, it stops working. And I also, like, the, the other thing is, as far as I know, most of the cards that were affected were specifically cards that had, were overclocked and not, like, if you ran stock clocks, it was fine. And if you had, over like, a, a OC models were, like, especially affected, basically, regardless of what capacitor configuration they had. Like, I've heard of tough cards crashing, and those only use multilayer ceramics. Um, and then also one of my favorite bulk filters as well. Like, you don't really... so. Anyway, I, I'm not really trying to discuss the other cards. Like, the, the thing is, NVIDIA put out a driver update that fixes the instability because evidently there was, like, it's a combination of factors, right? Like, again, if the driver is being a little bit too aggressive, like, there's a difference between the driver being way too aggressive. Like, let's say the driver bugs out and boosts the card to 2.5 gigahertz. No amount of capacitors is going to fix fix that kind of instability. Okay, like, there's nothing you can do about that. It's boosting to support, like, it's going to crash. Unless you're on liquid nitrogen, and even on liquid nitrogen, it's still probably going to crash. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the thing. It's just like, yeah, if you have a really massive power management problem, the capacitors don't matter. If you have a small, capa like, power management problem where you're not, you know, respecting the safety margin that you're supposed to have by your own specification... Um, that's when you start running into the, oh, some cards are sometimes crashing under some workloads, maybe. And then you get the driver update that that's supposed to fix that. And it's just like, because the thing is, like, I'm not aware, like, Gigabyte straight up said is, um, in their own statement, um, and passed all required testing, right? Like, I'm not aware of any other manufacturer even though basically everybody else was a, like, basically everyone was affected to some extent. Um, except EVGA, because the FTW3s didn't release until after the drivers were patched, which is kind of, like, <laughs> like that's like that's kind of convenient for uh, EVGA that the FTW3 d didn't come out until after the, the dr like, the fixed drivers. But anyway, like, I'm not aware of... Well, I think Colorful also made a statement that was like, oh yeah, we, we have some stability issues, and maybe Zotac. Um, but the thing is, like, most of, like, basically, as far as I know, almost everyone was affected, including, like, MSI, and, the, like, the Founders Edition is apparently the only exception. Um, and then I guess the cards that run it, like, aren't OC models that have stock clocks. So... You know, yeah, you could have a software issue where it's like the OC model cards would have, you know, like the o the OC BIOSes would have some weird interaction with NVIDIA's driver where they would boost a bit too much in certain circumstances that, you know, they, they maybe didn't get in testing or like the, the crash might just be very irregular. Um Especially if it's like a slight, like especially if the if the if the crashing is really borderline in terms of the voltage requirements, then it would be like, yeah, it might happen once an hour or something, right? Because there's a lot of times where you can run a like you can run a benchmark over and over and over again, and then at the same settings, and then eventually it finally crashes, um, or it crashes on the first run, and then you run the exact same settings again, and it doesn't crash the second time. Um, so that's kind of the the thing is just like. Like, anyway, what I just find interesting about it is just, like, like, the, this this being the pre-release capacitor configuration really changes the context for this statement, to me at least. Because it's just, like, I'm pretty sure nobody else, nobody else has a this bad capacitor configuration <laughs> on their, uh, on their, like, OC models. So, yeah, anyway, EVGA ultimately fixed it, so, you know, there's no... Like, I'm not saying the FTW3 is a bad uh, card here, and I, I still think, like, mostly it was a driver problem. Because, um, again, like, as far as I know, basically everything except the Founders Edition was was affected. 
Um, which, uh, yeah, like that really shouldn't happen. And, uh, like, as, like I've heard of tough cards crashing, MSI cards crashing, like everybody crashing. So it's just like, yeah, it's really not like that's, that's a driver issue. Um, but, uh, anyway, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of like, well, th like basically what I'm trying to get at is like this statement from EVGA is just like, well, it really doesn't apply to gigabytes conf configuration because gigabyte has like twice as much capacitance as what EVGA has. Um, actually more than twice as much. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the thing is just like that, that's, uh, and then like pallet has a better c configuration and so yeah anyway I'll, I'll just end this video here because honestly i'm not really sure what i wanted to include in it i just just it's interesting it's interesting anyway so yeah um that's it for the video thank you for watching like share subscribe leave any comments questions suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what i do here with actually hardcore overclocking i have a patreon you can support me there directly there's a link in the description and then there's also the hoc teespring store where you can pick up shirts stickers posters you know the usual youtuber merch um and there's a link to that down in the description below as well so yeah that's it for the video thanks for watching and goodbye